Do you want to introduce us? Yes. Hi, I'm Beth Bain. I'm one of the missioners on the mission amplification team. And um, I'm co-hosting with my friend. Hi, I'm Ellie. Um, I do social media and multimedia. So um, I think that's going to come in handy when we talk about video production today. Right? Yes, yes. And um, we are going to be continuing again next week. We had to skip last week. And so um, we're happy for another week. So I've got a screen to share. I can hope. <laughs> share that screen. And I forgot to, oops, there we go. I wasn't quite as prepared as I wanted to be. There we go. So this week, we're going to dive in deeper on telling our story. And we do want to invite you to type any questions or comments into the chat. And uh, Ellie's going to be monitoring those. And we want to certainly, we've got some information to share, but what you have to share is really, we think, actually so much more interesting and um, more helpful. So we want to hear what you have to say. So we're going to start with the prayer we've been praying each week, which is the stewardship prayer that we wrote for the diocese based on a prayer out of the Book of Common Prayer and then adapted. So as we gather across the miles with the wonder of the internet, uh, let us begin by remembering that God is already with us and guiding us. Generous and loving God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imagination, so control our wills that we may be yours, utterly dedicated to your service. Use us and all of our resources, each minute of our day, each of our humble gifts and talents, and even our finances, as you will. And always for your glory and for the welfare of your people, in and through and with the power of your spirit. Amen. Amen. So the most frequent question I get asked, and we publish it from time to time, but we probably, Ellie, need to get it permanently on the diocesan website which is how do I get all of the fabulous resources on the TENS website? TENS stands for the Episcopal, Epis, the Episcopal Network for Stewardship. And there are some resources that you can get without a password, but the diocese is a member, so you get to get all the goodies. And so the login is one Peter and the password is Four spelled out colon number 10. One Peter, four, 10. And if I bet Ellie's going to put that in somewhere, and if you lose it, we can give it to you with abandon. But I think it would be interesting for our Bible today to actually read what First Peter 4.10 is. So this is the login verse for the Episcopal Network for Stewardship. Serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gift. The first book of Peter, chapter 4, verse 10. So as we continue these chats, I think particularly, particularly this year, this is always a critical question, but particularly this year, as we create our money stewardship mission for 2020 to really pare down to what is essential. Before we got on, Ellie and I were talking about um, our brains are really tired and overloaded. 
And it's even harder to uh, keep our attention spans going. And it's even more challenging to learn new things and to process things. So as we're creating our money stewardship missions this year, do only what those things that we have to do. This is not a year for extras. We've talked about being really intentional and in how we create a stewardship team. Please, 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 please do not just let your rector or vicar do it. Rectors, rectors and vicars know a lot, but we don't know everything. And so please be sure you have a diverse team of not necessarily ages or whatever, but people who give in different ways. You're creating a vision, very tuned in to where you are to now, that in creating your timeline for your money stewardship mission, remember, there's a difference in budget making and a money stewardship. They're not the same. That the most we're doing with money stewardship is building relationship with each other, with God, with our money. That if you want to tie it into how the spending will, that we focus on funding, mission, and ministry. That's what makes us unique with the church, that we are funding, mission, and ministry that we have a unique opportunity in our worship to always invite people to give at the offertory, that today we're gonna to particularly talk about what we started last night, that money stewardship, the best money stewardship missions tell a story. And then next time we'll talk about the thank you part. So last time we talked about the stewardship letter. We talked about a lot of time is put into creating a stewardship letter and that the people who are most often changed by the stewardship letter are the people who write it and in that process. And so that in creating a stewardship letter, making it unique so that, and to really think, so what's the purpose of this letter? Because what we're doing in our stewardship letter and our all of our stewardship communications is we're telling a story. How does our story, the story of our congregation, connect and is a part of God's story? This is the essential thing. How is our story part of the bigger story of God? That is communicated in all of our money stewardship opportunities. So I want to share some parts, this is a lot of words, but I'm going to read it, from the stewardship letter that Trinity Longview um, created last year as an example of a very interesting stewardship letter. It's the first money stewardship communication, and you'll note it says nothing about money. So it starts off by saying we're convinced that stewardship of all kinds, including our stewardship of money, starts with, and I'd like to put all caps, relationships, both with God and others. For us, this begins when God draws our hearts to God through the invitation of Jesus. And they've noted they've enclosed a small card with a prayer that we're asking everyone to use throughout this season to remind us to put God first in our life. So there's something tangible in there. And then they say our stewardship is rooted in our growing faith in God, our call to serve, and the Christian love we share with others. And here's the part. With that in mind, over the next few weeks, we will be approaching members of various ages both long established members and more recent arrivals and ask them to reflect on the following questions. So we're gonna talk about the questions. That's what the stewardship letter is about, is the prayer and the questions. And then it says from the responses we receive, we plan to develop a series of short testimonials from the members of Trinity, six of which will be offered at select Sunday services. With permission, testimonials will be recorded and shared in many ways, all caps, many ways, how many ways? Many ways, with the goal of strengthening the understanding and relationship among our congregation. And remember, oh, I'll go back, whoops. 
over the next six weeks. And here's where the follow-up comes in. There will be many opportunities to build these relationships and to work and celebrate together. It's been said that stewardship gives us an opportunity to examine our priorities, express our gratitude, and give of ourselves by God's grace. And remember, they've enclosed a small card with a prayer that we're asking everyone to use. So here's what I like about this stewardship letter. First, it has a little theological statement about how they look at stewardship. Second, they kind of let you know what's going to go on. It's going to be about building relationships. One of that way that's going to be a relationship, there's a little card that everyone can put on a refrigerator or their table that they can pray together every day. They could pray that prayer every time they gather for worship. So it's this one thing that everyone can do. Everyone can pray. And then it says, we have some questions we want you to be thinking about. And we're going to be reaching out to you. And maybe some of you would like to film it. Well, here's some of the questions. So one of the questions was, how has God shown up and changed your life through the people and ministries of church? I like this one. What are your God-sized dreams for our church? Tell about a time when being part of our Episcopal church has made a difference in your life. Now, what I like is they invited everyone to start thinking about it. But what one of the things that you could do is each week um, focus maybe in your somehow in your online worship, on your uh, whatever your email communications are. Maybe if you have some kind of bulletin you're using, have the question for the week that's going to be featured maybe through a video or a sermon but have everybody figure out a way to answer it. And maybe you could even um, have a way they could post those on Facebook, but different ways. So you don't just have the six people doing the testimonials. Everybody is having an opportunity to think of that story. The more we can engage with each other, I think the better our money stewardship is. One of the things that Trinity did also, which I especially love because I think you know how I feel about if you're only going to do teach money stewardship with one group, do people 18 and below. Build habits that are going to last forever. So they also had questions, particularly for their younger members. Actually, I think these would be great questions for those of us of riper years to answer as well. But with their younger members or with families, they said, so why do we give ourselves to God? Why do we give money to God? What does our church do for the people of our town? Again, it's this wonderful way of, of creating disciples about thinking particularly about money not and about how our money is a tool that God gives us to make a difference. Well, that gets us to the videos. We have the expert of the world here with our videos, uh, Miss Ellie. <laughs> And Ellie actually has a great little handout that tells you how to create a video with your phone that is really fabulous. So what would you like to say about that, Ellie? Yeah, um, so the document I made was basically six steps to film yourself well with an iPhone or an Android, whatever smartphone you have. Um, and the steps basically come down to think about what direction you wanna film in Make sure your lighting is good. Make sure your audio is good. Make sure you're well framed. Basically, imagine a good video you've seen and then do a lot of practice. Take some practice videos and uh, get, your, get your video to the point that you would enjoy watching it. <laughs> right, if you don't enjoy watching it then. So Ellie, how can they get that uh, list of tips? Uh, yeah, if you send me an email, I'd be happy to respond with that attachment. Um, so I'll put my email down here in the, um, I'm typing and talking at the same time, which is something that like apparently I cannot do. Um, I put my email down in the comments. Um, so if you want to shoot me an email to get that handout, um, it has a lot more specific instructions. And I also took a bunch of pictures of myself back when we were in the office um, with some examples of like 
good good things to do and then also some bad things to do. Um, it was a fun one. It's definitely a fun little PDF. So I encourage you to shoot me an email and I'll, I'll respond with that um, attachment. And what I love, Ellie, is when um, some churches were beginning to create these videos last year, it was like pretty like, you know, starting to put on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or on their web page or, but now that's about the way that we really are communicating and particularly when we have some people gathering, some not gathering, that they can be dropped into your Zoom worship or your mm -hmm. Facebook worship so that everyone can see they can be posted on your Facebook page one church what they're doing that I love I love is they're inviting every family whether it's a family of one or of eight to gather together and make a video that answers the question I mean don't you love see, being in people's houses I mean Ellie lives in the season of creation I live <laughs> But that you get to see the backgrounds. I mean, and so it's a way that we get to come into each other's homes, our spaces, in this time when we feel so, so, so um, separated. And I love that the way that this builds relationships. Um, we feel closer to each other because we see where we're living. And so inviting each family to ha answer one of those questions would be a wonderful way. And you could actually post all of those and then you might feature some. I thought that was a super idea. And, and if I were in a parish, I think that's the one I would choose because it would get everyone involved in thinking about money stewardship. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, one thing to consider specifically with stewardship stories because they're such personal testimonials. Um, for a formal video, you're gonna want to film horizontally like this, but you'll notice that on applications like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram TV, everyone films vertically. Um, and that's because vertical video feels a lot more personal. And so it's harder to watch that well on YouTube, um, but YouTube will frame it well for you and Facebook does allow vertical video. So think about um, using some vertical video maybe in these sorts of situations where you want to get a sort of selfie style personal um, relationship going on. That's just a like production treat in there for you. But uh, that hard and fast rule about vertical versus horizontal, not so hard and fast. It's good for these personal situations. And I really think as um, different folks are all answering the same questions and it, it makes a huge tapestry of well, this is where this person sees or this person sees. And I think, again, that's building relationships when it feels particularly challenging to build relationships right now. Mm -hmm. I have a couple more things, but I wonder if any questions have come in, Ellie. Um, I don't see any questions yet, but okay. uh, anybody who's watching this, if you have any questions, comments, um, suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I'm reading them right now. Um, so there might be like a 20 second delay, but we will respond to you. I'd be really curious if you've done this. Um, if, if you did ask some questions, what questions? I would never tell you what questions to use. I think that um, what you saw was a group of about five or six people from Trinity, including the rector, but mainly lay persons who had a, a wide range of experience with the parish who created that letter and I was part of, of, with them, I saw how long it took to create that letter and then how long it took to create the questions. They created the questions that were unique for their congregation. And so I think part of that process, I think sometimes it feels easier just to use some questions other people have done and there's nothing wrong with that. But maybe you have a unique thing that you want to share this year. Um, I'll also tell you one of the, the things that I've heard is if you're wanting to have some an engaging way to connect with people in your community, to say, this is a church I'd like to be part of. These stories bring people in. They show that you're real people, that you're, um, you're real people. And I think so, yes, they help with your money stewardship, but they have such larger impact, which feels like God's economy to me. Oh yeah. See, um when people search for new churches, let's say you arrive in a new city and you're looking for new churches, you scope out their website um, and you're going to look at everything that they have online before you show up to make sure that you fit in and to see what kind of values are in that community. So if you have 
these deep questions being asked and answered, that's available for to as an invitation as well for people to come into your community so they know what you're all about and not just know what you're all about by this letter from the vestry, but really personal interactions with folks that they might be in community with someday. One of the things um, that I read yesterday is that we actually have two front doors now. Uh, we have the front door of our church, which a lot of us are not getting to go into right now, but the front door is um, our webpage. And so one of the things is uh, in having something like this on the front part of your webpage, which is certainly serving your community, but is very outward looking, um, the webpage is helpful for your own congregation, but it really, really has more to say to the larger community of those people who are searching. And I think people are hungrier now, are searching more, and I, I truly believe uh, this is really off many stewardship, but that um, particularly Epi the Episcopal Church is a place that is welcoming in a time when people are not always feeling welcomed. We have one question from Liz. Um, is the stewardship prayer available on the EDOT website? Not yet. We were just talking about that. <laughs> I said, Ellie, we need 15 minutes to get all the resources up there. If uh, I'm going to give you my email address again, and I will email it to you. But we want to. what I'd love to do is get these videos up there and the prayer and um, some of those other resources, get those updated. Some things are beyond my technology ability to update. So I need my friend Ellie um, to do that. So we can definitely do that. We're going to be revamping the stewardship page coming up, so keep an eye out. So thank you for the gentle uh, reminder. It's a lovely prayer. You can always, you know, rewind to the beginning of the live stream. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Every time. Pause you and pause. Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm also happy to send you the, the slides if you just email me. I'm going to give you my email address. So as, you're, um, as we're kind of uh, thinking through on the way that we get to tell our story through money stewardship, it's such a great opportunity as a way that we build relationships not only with God and our money, but with one another. Remember that it takes at least 10 different touches to make sure that we um, reach everyone in the congregation. And what I know that one church did was because I knew people that were not going to go on social media, um, that to, they burned their little videos to a DVD. Yeah. I love that. No, and, and actually, you could probably do it for everybody. And so people put them in their DVD players and have them on their big screen. So think, I mean, we always need to be thinking creatively about who is missing from how we're communicating? And if or someone who may not have a computer, there are people without computers that might. So how can we get this, this message out in, in different ways? So I want to show you just a couple more things before we uh, wrap up today. So um, we've already talked about to look at the different opportunities that you can provide to reflect on whatever your stewardship question or questions are to make sure um, if we just do it one time, we've really missed probably 90% of the people. And so doing it over and over, if you've got actually uh, what one church did, they had a stewardship question of the week. And so in all of the Zoom Bible studies, all of the, the little meetings they had with the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, that was their beginning point was to share that stewardship question as another way of building relationship and helping everyone think together when they had to be a part. I also wanted to tell you another opportunity. Um, We've started a group that meet on Thursdays at three o'clock. So a couple of hours from now, it's via Zoom. So if you would like to come and we meet for an hour and just kind of help one another um, share ideas. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about what are some opportunities to give when we have more limited, uh, we can't do fundraisers, those kinds of things. We're gonna have some conversations about that among other things that come up. And if you'll just email me at bfane at epicenter.org, 
I would love to send you the invitation for the stewardship conversations. They're three to four, they're very informal, love prayer, we'll support each other and share ideas. I often find your ideas are so much better than mine. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. So next week is our final meeting of the Lunch and Learn. Um, we're gonna talk about, so do you do follow-up? And how does that happen? And what's the best practices for that? And then is there something else you need beside an updated webpage on the diocesan side? But what are some things that we can do to support you? We are here for you. Um, we want to do things in a way that will help you do the real work of the, in the mission field. And so we would love to hear what would be more helpful for you. And we can do lunch and learns. They're so easy and really fun. And I get to be with my friend Ellie. So that's a real bonus for me. Whoa. So was there anything else that came up, Ellie? Um, I don't see anything else in the comments. Um, if you guys have anything right now that's last minute, drop them in there and uh, we'll try to get to them if we can. Um, and one more note that I forgot to mention about video is that it's sort of two things. One, authenticity is so key and so much more important than production value, mm. right? So don't worry so much about having the most expensive lights, the most expensive microphone. People want, you know, there's a bare minimum to achieve, right? But at the same time, it's more about the content and connecting with each other as people. Um, and then on that note as well, um, video and screens tend to sort of cool things down. So um, what, here's my, here's my favorite example of this. It's like, I go, blah, like that. That would be, really, really weird if we were sitting here together in person. That would be horribly intimidating if I were sitting at a table with you and reached my arms out real wide and came at you like I'm trying to scare away a cougar or something. But on on the screen, <laughs> it almost seems fine. Um, so it, we really have to remember to turn things up to 11. Emote, you know, if you're excited about something, you gotta get like, you got to get theater kid level excited about it um, <laughs> for it to come across. And then once once it does come across like that, though, it is so real um, and so much more important than having the perfect set or something like that. Um, ooh, one more question from Albert. Can we get the PowerPoint for this session? Absolutely. Email me and I will send it out with abandon. So awesome. Well, thank you. We will be back next week and um, wrap up this series and um, see if there's any place else we need to go. If you want to come and join us at three o'clock for some informal conversation, just email me. I'll send you the Zoom link. And um, I'm going to say a prayer for all of us as we go in and do God's work. I hope the weather is as pretty where you are as it is right here with us. We're so happy to have pretty weather for a change in Houston. And so God, for your truth has been spoken, may it grow in our minds and inform our lives. If any place we've been amiss, gently correct us. May all we do um, be your work. May all we do further your mission. And pray especially for those in congregations that are trying so hard to communicate that you would show them what they need to do and what is not essential. And that even now you would be preparing the hearts of those who will be receiving invitations to give. That we may know we always have enough. And that we may share with generosity. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody. See you next week. <laughs>